Yes? Just a couple comments on the draft okay. resolution. I'll just rattle on and see what happens. Well, on the draft resolution, Michael, uh, one is, uh, again, uh, I was almost consistent. I also have the wrong date in here again. Oh. Uh, it's April 7th, not April 3rd. But I wasn't totally consistent because later on I referred to April 7th on another resolution. And I would suggest doing this at 650 um, before the Mensch application because the Mensch application might draw okay. uh, yeah. some public uh, discussion. Not, not Stephen Mensch's, but, okay, uh, but Jonathan's. Okay. okay, well here we go. The Town of Brandeis Planning Board, upon review by the Zoning Enforcement Officer, hereby acts as follows on the application by Peter and Catherine Jarapko for site plan review and approval under Town Code Chapter 125 Zoning in the matter of proposed renovation and additions to a two-story dwelling on a 1.44 acre parcel at 383 Morton Road, uh, CR 85 in the Historic Preservation, HB 20 Zoning District, the Hudson River Historic Landmarks District, and the Town of Rhinebeck Local Water Waterfront Revitalization Area, and adjacent to a certified agricultural district, all is depicted on site in architectural drawings, ALAA0A1A2A6, prepared by Peter H. Sharapko, architect, and dated November 26, 2013, and otherwise described in the full EAF Part 1 Coastal Assessment Form and Ag Data Statement, each executed and verified by the applicant. One, accepts the application as adequate for commencing review by the planning board, the board's consultants, and the public. Two, classifies the proposed action as a type one action under seeker for which there are no other involved agencies permitting, approving, or financing agencies, thus making the planning board the lead agency under seeker. Schedules a combined public hearing as set forth within the annexed notice of public hearing on the applications for Monday, April 7, 2014 at 6.50 p.m. and directs the clerk to undertake and or otherwise cause noticing and posting thereof <coughs> in strict accordance with the provisions of Town Code Chapter 125, Zoning Section 12577. Four, further directs the Planning Board Clerk to circulate the agricultural data statement in the manner prescribed in the New York State Agriculture and Markets Law. Delegates, Planning Board members, who wants to go to Rancliffe? I will. I'll okay. go. Okay. Whoa. Oh. You guys everybody want to, wants to go to Rancliffe. Well, I just live up the road. <laughs> you want to do, that's two out of three falls here to see who wins? Bob can go. Bob can go. Okay. Bob and Sharon? Okay. <laughs> to conduct a field visit to the project site and report their observations at the time of public hearing. Refers the application to the Town Conservation Advisory Board for review and comment. Refers the application to the Town Historian for review and comment. Refers the application to the Town Waterfront Advisory Committee for review and recommendation as the consistency with the pertinent Town Coastal Policies as set forth within the Town's Local Waterfront Revitalization Program. Without prejudice to requirement for careful consideration by the Planning Board or any input that arises through the continuing review process as set forth above, authorizes the Planning Consultant to prepare working drafts of both an EAF Part 2 and resolutions with recommended conditions and or requirements incorporated for consideration by the Board under Seeker and the Town Code when and if timely. Could I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Uh, excuse me. Yes, sir. On behalf of my grandfather, that's Peter W., Oh. <laughs> Sorry. I so noted. Can I get that in there? No, so noted. It was Very correct good. in the document. Yeah, I just probably fumbled. <laughs> you did. I'm sorry. I. So, so, but wait, wait, wait. We just have to vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. You're on for the public hearing. That means we come back. On April 7th at 6.50 will be the public hearing. And there will be a resolution. And there will be a resolution of approval. Unless... Unless the two, two uh, members of the board find some something happens, oh. what you'll want to do is coordinate with Sharon and Bob on the site visit. Uh, maybe with Peter uh, might be the easiest way to do it. Mr. Trimble, is mm -hmm. that another presentation at that day, or basically? It would basically be just exactly what you just did. Now, if there's more public here, if there's public. What you did tonight was was perfectly adequate, more than adequate. Where basically all we really deal with is the exterior of the structure as opposed to any of the interior or anything like that. And so yeah, there, this is... And if there is this, no public? And if there is no public... Absolutely, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, the next item. This is the Grace Bible Fellowship Church, 6959 New York State Route 9 North, special use permit and site plan. This yeah. agenda item follows upon the sketch plan conference calls. held with the planning board on February 3rd, 2014 and an earlier pre-submission meeting coordinated by the chairman in which uh, Art participated. Uh, uh, um, Michael? Yes, sir? Um, I don't know what you're going to see, but... <sighs> what about... Move, we've got a whole series of these little applications. Mm -hmm. What about uh, mending the mending the Are public hearing on uh, Minch all the to like 730 or something like that and scheduling these like 710, 715, etc. Because yeah. we've got this, we've got Blackwood, we've got uh, yeah. the new one that came in today. Right. 
uh, they're going to go, you know, they're, they're about eight, eight public hearings. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, um, amend that prior application to 7 to 730. Make it the last one and get, get all these others in. We have Grace, we have Grace Bible, Blackwood, and one other. And that's for men's special purpose. We have Grace Wood, Blackwood, Giuliano, and one other. Yeah, okay. So, you know, Joni, what we're going to do... A motion to amend. Uh, we're going to make a motion to amend, and you can tell Jonathan and that it's not your fault. So we're going to move the Grassmere public hearing to 735 so that we can get all the other ones done first, because we assume there's going to be more public comment on that one, and that way it won't hold everyone else up. So could I hear a motion to amend? Could I hear a second? Just go ahead, say second. Second. <laughs> all in favor? Okay. We're good. Rod. Good evening. We are here again. Um, we are, what's gone on in our process is we lost about a month with the ZBA because of a lack of a quorum. So two nights from now, we are there for the first time to discuss the project and the variances. Um, as we covered uh, last month here, there are two variances that are associated with this desire from the church to add a recreation field and add some landscaping and do some regrading and so on. So um, to that to that progress um, with this board here, we've gone through, you know, the overall project and what it is. Uh, I think procedurally, somewhere along the line, we're going to have to reach a point, hopefully, where we can receive a neg deck from you so the ZBA can actually vote. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to make any progress you'd like towards that. and. Uh, uh, and I leave it. I leave it in your hands as to where we can go here, and I'll answer any questions that there might be about the project. I'll explain one thing to the town board. Generally, we have a project which requires a variance, and if the variance is approved, we can then approve the project. We want the ZBA to have accepted the variance application before we accept the application. In this case, the ZBA did not meet for three consecutive meetings due to a lack of quorum. Right. Although the applicant had their application to the ZBA, <coughs> excuse me, well in advance of tonight. So I feel that it's perfectly adequate for us to proceed with accepting their application before the planning board. I think they're going before the ZBA, I think, Wednesday night. Wednesday night. Wednesday night. So that's correct. I don't see a problem with that. The problem was not with the applicant. It was with a failure of the system to function. So if you have no objection to that, um, I do have a Resolution here. I know we've gone over this with them before. The uh, two the two variances have to do with putting a athletic field on site, which is for the members of the church, but they also want to make it available to the public. So it's you know in many ways it is also a public amenity. Um, I don't know if you have any other questions that we didn't answer before when we had the pre sub meeting and whatnot, the sketch plan meeting. I right. any planning board members anything? I think you as well voted circulate for lead agency, and I don't know how that's happening time wise, but. We're, we're probably getting close. We're still within that 30 day sure, period. 30 I think days, we're probably right. at 25 yep. or something like that. But we'll be in great shape by the 7th. Right. So. Excellent. If I have no objection, I will read this resolution to you. And it's April 7th at 7. <laughs> well, wait a minute. The other one was at 7. You can't do another one at 7. We already have one at 7. Oh, wait a minute. We moved, we moved. We moved him to 7 30. Oh. Five. Yeah. Oh, you, you get the double 7s. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah. We're, this, is, this is going back into that, that what is now that open slot. Right. <laughs> the town of Rhinebeck Planning Board. Upon review by the Zoning Enforcement Office, I hereby act as follows in the matter of an application for special use permits for a not-for-profit or other non-commercial outdoor recreation facility or use and for major excavation and a related application for site plan review and approval in the matter of a proposed site grading, drainage improvements, and recreational field development on the existing church property in the rural countryside RC5 district and adjacent to a site on the National Register of Historic Places, all as depicted or otherwise described within a set of site plan drawings entitled Land Contour Permit for Grace Bible Church, Stormwater Pollution Prevention Plan, Full EAF Part 1, Agricultural Data Statement, all is prepared by LRC Group and dated January 21st, 2014 and following a sketch plan conference held on February 3rd, 2014. A further transmittal letter with incorporated project narrative issued by LRC Group on February 7th, 2014 and being in total a proposed action concerning which the Planning Board issued a notice of intent to serve as lead agency under seeker on February 7th, 2014. In consideration of both the applicant's acknowledgement that there are certain minimum acreage and location standards with respect to an outdoor recreation use that are not met by the proposed development and the applicant's submission of a related uh, application for area variances to the Zoning Board of Appeals on February, and we'll get that date. 
2014, accepts the applications for special use permits and site plan review and approval as adequate for commencing review by the planning board, the board's consultants, and the public. Schedules a combined public hearing as set forth within the annexed notice of public hearing on the applications for Monday, April 7th at 2014 at 7 p.m and directs the clerk to undertake and or otherwise cause noticing and posting thereof in strict accordance with the provisions of Town Code Chapter 125 Zoning, Section 12566 and 12577. Further directs the Planning Board Clerk to circulate the data, the agricultural data statement in the manner prescribed in the New York State Agriculture and Markets Law. Delegates, Planning Board members, who would like to go? Okay, I'll go. Who wants to go with me? Woody. Ooh, brave man. Okay to conduct a field visit to the project site and report their observations at the time of public hearing. Refers the application to the Town Conservation Advisory Board for review and comment. Refers the application to the Town Historian for review and comment. Refers the application for special use permit and site plan review and approval to the Dutchess County Department of Planning and Development for review and advisory opinion pursuant to the requirements of sections 239 I and M of the New York State General Municipal Law. Refers the site plan and associated SWIP to the Planning Board Engineer for technical engineering review and comment. Requests further technical review of the applications by the town's planning consultant and both in anticipation of the planning board's designation as lead agency under seeker and without prejudice to requirement for careful consideration by the planning board of any input that arises through the continuing review process as set forth above authorizes the planning consultant to prepare a working draft of a full EAF part two and part three <coughs> as may be required and recommended determination of significance for consideration by the planning board if so designated and when timely. The planning board does so in recognition of the inability of the zoning board of appeals to decide above noted applications for area variances until coordinated environment quality review has been undertaken by the designated lead agency. Could I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay, I'm taking that as all in favor. Mm -hmm. Yes. Aye. Very good. Aye. Woody and I will coordinate with you for the site visit. Sounds great. Sounds great. Okay. Okay. You're done. Thank you very much. For tonight. All I'll add is that uh, the ZBA was looking for volunteers for members, so. Yeah, they found one. <laughs> they found one and there Maybe a few alternates. So. Yeah, they, they did find one. And they're back from vacation, so I think you're good to go. Take care. Okay, the final, the next item, not the final item, we still have ready to go. Uh, I not have any more. Really? Oh, good. Edward Giuliano, uh, 215 and 235 New York State Route 308 East, Subdivision Platt. This agenda item involves, first, the conduct of a sketch plan conference with the applicant, and then, if timely, the initial presentation of an application for subdivision plat approval under Town Code Chapter 101, subdivision of land, including supporting preliminary surveyor's map, show EAF Part 1, and agricultural data statement. In the matter of proposed lot line alterations, including a total of five acres to adjoining parcels and creation of a 5.7 acre residential building lot from 71.6 acre parcel in the rural countryside RC5 district and a certified agricultural district. Okay. okay. Uh, good evening. Uh, I, this is the first time I'm before the board, so I'm not exactly sure what my role is here. I'm just going to briefly tell you uh, what the plan is. I, my name is Edward Giuliano. I live at uh, 303, Route 308. Uh, I also own the uh, adjacent property, which is 71 acre lot, which is right at the uh, very edge of town. Uh, you may all know the property. Um, on the uh, east side of Rhinebeck, where the Rhinebeck sign is. It's the property with the heart carved into the side of the hillside. So that's the property. That's 71 acres there. And uh, my plan is very simple. Um, I'd like to, there, it involves two lot line uh, moves. Uh, the neighbor at uh, 215 Route 308 is going to buy an additional two acre, three acres behind his property, which will actually increase his property to just over five acres. Uh, the other neighbor at 230 Route 308 is going to buy an additional two acres. That'll also uh, increase his property to um, a little over five acres. So, mm -hmm. um, beyond that, I do want to create a five acre, a little 5.7 acre, uh, it'll be a flag lot um, on that hillside. That hillside that will take up that hillside where the heart is. So that's my plan. I didn't bring any big maps in. Uh, we just we had discussed this um, this proposal before. I, do you have a couple of small maps there? I have. Um, I did submit in the package. Right, you got the package. We have it. Oh, we have it. Okay. It's in the package. Yep. You all have seen what's being proposed. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And basically, then the rest of the land will remain in agriculture. Um, the rest of the land is actually. 
Yeah. Right. But there are no plans to do anything I'd like to keep it up to it. Any questions? I have a comment. Uh, I did review uh, the entire package. Uh, the package was submitted is consistent with the uh, pre-submission conference that uh, we held uh, a couple of months ago. Uh, the proposed configuration of the annexation parcels, the proposed configuration of the 5.7 acre lot, as well as the uh, what will then be the uh, configuration of the remaining lands parcel, uh, all are consistent with the zoning requirements. Uh, there don't appear to be any uh, planning, zoning, or environmental issues uh, uh, present here that are that would rise to any level of uh, significance. Uh, the applications are uh, are complete uh, with. Uh, uh, all portions, all uh, supporting materials that are appropriate at this uh, point in time, including the work by uh, John Decker, land surveyor. Uh, consequently, there is, uh, there is proposed for your consideration, again, a simple procedural resolution. Uh, under the uh, land subdivision regulations uh, and uh, recommendation, again, that uh, we change the date from April 3rd to April 7th in that resolution right and insert 7, 10 p.m. As, a, as the time. Uh, the only other requirement uh, beyond the current submission uh, that will ultimately come into play here uh, is that in, in that the lot is in excess of five acres, there doesn't need to be engineering design for proposed septic on the five acre lot, but there's going to have to be a certified opinion letter uh, submitted by a professional engineer regarding the suitability of that lot to accommodate uh, a SDS for not less than a three bedroom residence. And secondly, uh, once uh, this matter moves another step down the road, uh, they're going to have to be submitted uh, proposed merger or consolidation deeds uh, depicting or describing how the two annexation parcels are going to be incorporated with uh, their receiving parcels. And that's basically the, you know, basically the situation. It's a fairly, fairly straightforward application. Those are the conditions of stamping and signing the final plat. Right. And, I, and I did submit a letter already in the package from the uh, engineer. Yes. Well, I guess the other thing that uh, probably is not included in my, uh, uh, in my resolution uh, is that there should be um, uh, a letter concerning, a letter from state DOT regarding a prospective access point on 308, uh, basically not uh, approving a highway work permit at this point in right. time, but essentially conceptually stating that uh, DOT does not have a problem with creating a driveway access point at some point along the frontage of that proposed 5.7 acre parcel. Okay. And that once again could also be a condition of final stamping that That's getting right. that letter of that opinion letter. All right then. <clears throat> Here we go again. The Town of Rhinebeck Planning Board upon both review by the Zoning Enforcement Officer and Sketch Plan Review by this Board, hereby acts as follows in the matter of an application by Edward Giuliani, Giuliano sorry, for subdivision plat approval under Town Code Chapter 101, Subdivision of Land, in the matter of a proposed lot line alterations, adding a total of five acres to adjoining parcels in creation of a 5.7 acre residential building lot from a 71.6 acre parcel on New York State Route 308 East in the Rural Countryside RC5 District in a certified agricultural district, all is depicted on a preliminary surveyor's map prepared and stamped by John Decker, LS, and dated February 4, 2014, and otherwise described in the short EAF Part 1 and an agricultural data statement, both as executed and are verified by Mr. Giuliani. Giuliano. Whew. I'll get it right. One, accepts Mr. Giuliano's February 12, 2014, application for subdivision plat approval under Town Code Chapter 101, subdivision of land, as adequate for commencing review by the planning board, the board's advisors, and the public. Two, classifies the application as a minor two-lot subdivision with other lot line alterations, and the proposed action is an unlisted action under seeker for which coordinated environmental quality review is neither required nor will it be conducted. Three, schedules a public hearing as set forth within the annexed notice of public hearing on the application for Monday, April 7th, 2014 at 7, 10 p.m. and directs the clerk to undertake or otherwise cause the noticing and posting thereof in accordance with the requirements set forth within Town Code Chapter 101, Subdivision of Land Chapter 101-4-.4D1. Further directs the clerk to distribute the agriculture data statement in accordance with the requirements of the New York State Agriculture and Markets Law. Delegates, planning board members, you got Melody? I'll go. And I'll go because it's on my way in to get a bagel. Okay. <laughs> Okay. To conduct a field visit to the proposed subdivision site and report their observations at the time of public hearing. 
refers the application to the Conservation Advisory Board for review and comment. Advises the applicant of the following requirements heretofore not addressed. A, either design approval by the Dutchess County Health Department for a proposed on-site water supply and sanitary sewage facilities on the proposed 5.7 acre residential building lot, or the submission of a letter from a licensed professional engineer stating his opinion based on specifically referenced field investigation that a sanitary disposal system serving not less than a three bedroom dwelling can be designed and sited on the proposed lot in accordance with Dutchess County Health Department standards which we have. B. Submission of drafts of consolidation or merger deeds whereby each of the annexation parcels will be consolidated with an existing parcel for review by the planning board and recording the Dutchess County Clerk's Office simultaneously with the filing of the approved subdivision plat. C. Conceptual approval by New York State DOT of proposed driveway access location uh, onto New York State Route uh, 308. Eight, request further technical review by the of the application by the town's planning consultant and without prejudice to information that may be presented at the public hearing or may arise on the basis of the above cited referral and field visit authorizes the planning consultant to prepare a draft seeker resolution, negative declaration, and draft approval resolution for consideration by the planning board when and if timely. Could I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Second. 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 Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. I will coordinate with you for the site visit. And um, we will be here on April 7th at 7:10 for the public hearing. Okay. And at that point, you might want to just have one larger map just to show the public so they can all see. But that's about the only thing I think you're going to need. Okay. Thank you. Okay. The next item. Make sure I got all this right. Next item is Duffy, and that's covered by the initial review, as opposed to being right. in the notes. Right. Uh, Robert Duffy, 195 River Road, County Road 103, and 31 Carmel Drive, Special Use Permits and Site Plan. This, is just a, uh, this agenda item follows upon a pre-submission conference the chairman and I held with the applicant's project team on December 4th, 2013, the sketch plan conference held with the planning board January 6th, 2014, and multiple other communications with the project team between and after those events. Um, Okay, the agenda item involves initial presentation of applications for special use permits and site plan review and approval under Town Code Chapter 125 zoning, including supporting EAF Part 1 and Coastal Assessment Form in the matter of the proposed single-family residential development of combined 44.096 acre and another parcel with site landscaping improvements, guest accommodations in the form of three detached accessory dwellings and other accessory structures in the Historic Preservation HB20 Zoning District, the Hudson River Historic Landmarks District, the Estates District, Scenic Area of Statewide Significance, and the Town of Rhymick Local Waterfront Revitalization Area, all of which are to complement a structure known as the Astor Tea House. Okay. Good evening, I'm Christopher Courtney um, with Jack Litch Gardner Architects representing uh, Robert Duffy. Um, should I go through as much yeah, of this again? Yeah. Or, okay. um, last time we presented, um, the, there, there has been a slight scope of work um, modification. Uh, in general, there is a, um, a guest house we're proposing. Um, uh, sorry, I should start. The River Road is over here, and Hudson River is here. Um, there are two properties, 31 Carmel Drive and 195 Car um, River Road. Um, Scope of work includes a guest house. Um, uh, there's an existing barn that would be converted also into a guest house. Um, there's a courtyard as an entrance drive, um, entrance driveway courtyard in front of the existing um, after tea house, which previous in 2008 was um, uh, expanded. Um, there is also a proposed pool. Um, there's a small pavilion as an uh, accessory um, to the pool. Um, there is a new septic system which will serve the three new um, buildings. And there is also a proposed um, uh, barn um, that's meant to serve as um, storage of uh, equipment, as well as um, a septic system for a half bathroom with a bathroom for the end. Um, so it's only in here. Um, there's also an entry gate at both entries to the property. Um, and in general, there's a lot of screening and landscaping um, proposed for all of these areas here. Um, that is the majority of the scope of work. Okay, I know that Art shared his comments with you about the uh, EAF. Yes. Um, I assume those have been incorporated into a revised EAF Part 1. 
Yes, and we, we submitted that, I believe, last Friday. Um, included with, with that were some revisions in coordination with the SWIP um, uh, proposal as well. Okay. Um, just, just for clarification, Joan, you've received the revised EAF and the, uh, and the, and the half-scale drawings that... I did not. However, I questioned if it's down in the zoning office. It was, uh, it was FedEx then, um, according to FedEx, received Friday at noon, I think. Because again, that, those were those were uh, pre receiving that material is a prerequisite mm -hmm. prerequisite uh, to the circulation of the NOI. Right. Okay. So that has not yet occurred then. I don't remember. I believe that the uh, FedEx package came in for Michael on Friday. Okay. Michael was not in the office on Friday. Um, I didn't see it today, but then I wasn't looking for it because I didn't know it was there. Right. Because it was supposed to come to the planning board office. But what I will do is I will turn this over to the vice chairman and go and break into the office down there and see if it's down there. Okay. You all continue. Chris, you can continue the yeah, public. Melody's continue your presentation. She's the vice chair. Um, it's important for applicants to send things to the planning board office, not to the zoning enforcement. Anyway. Are there, um, are there further questions or clarifications? Anything needed on this? Or I can go into more. Yeah, Chris, uh, go through the. Uh, I'm just um, helping Melody here. Go through the, uh, the 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 various components. I know you you you, f you first referenced the. Uh, you started talking about the. I guess you call it the glass house. That particular accessory structure. Mm -hmm. Whether well, two more accessory structures, there's the barn, mm -hmm. uh, etc. Go th go through all of that for everyone's benefit. Sure, I have some of these things. Especially square, especially hmm? square footage. Yeah. yeah. So to actually start with the, this is first, the, the driveway entrance to, um, to this existing house. So here's the tea house and here's where it was added um, prior. Um, there's also an existing um, walled in rear terrace in the back that's um, faced in brick. Um, the house has been refaced, has been faced in brick. Um, it was a white stucco house when it was purchased. So the client was interested in um, sort of reclaiming the look of the house as much as possible to the existing tea house. Um, the tea house had been covered in stucco as well, so that was removed from the entire structure um, covered in brick. So, so starting with the, the um, courtyard, the wall is meant to sort of continue that look and that feel. Um, the ground is uh, meant to be a, a cobble border here. Um, with some of the paving, um, bluestone steps, and landscaping on either side up to um, the pool area. The pool area would be a grass lawn around the bluestone um, trimmed white gunite interior pool. Um, fence around it and landscaping around it and is um, up to the same height as the required four foot um, fence for the pool. Um, the small pavilion would also be faced in brick, um, also octagonal to sort of mirror and mimic, but not the same size or exact um, detailing of the tea house in the back. Um, some sections of this as well, looking through both um, the house, the courtyard, up the, up the stairs into the pool, um, through the pool itself, and the um, Pavilion, and as well just looking through the section of the courtyard itself um, towards the landscape of the pool. Could you be specific about what, as you're going through this, can you be specific There's about the square have. footage of each of these buildings? Sure, absolutely. Um, the, let's see. the pavilion that we're looking at is um, it's two, it's two stories. The bottom floor is um, just mechanical. The mechanical is close to the pool and it also serves as um, boiler for the ice mill, which would be underneath both the courtyard and the existing driveway. Um, combined square footage of all of this is 600. Is that the footprint size or the combination of both stories? The both, cellar? Both stories. Okay. Both stories. Yeah. The, this is sort of large at the pavilion. 
Um, so as you can see, it's all uh, brick-faced. Um, the window and details are kind of meant to mimic what is on the tea house. Um, the roof would be a um, copper roof. Um, there is an entry to, to the basement that's going to be cut into the ground. Um, so this mechanical storage basement here. Um, the entrance to, that's here. The entrance to the pavilion is um, basically mimics the, the doors and the windows mimic each other around it. Um, there's a single bathroom, and it's meant to be a sort of studio space, um, mostly an accessory to the um, pool, but as per zoning um, law, essentially it's an ex a, a, a detached accessory building unit. I picked that up someplace. Sorry, the glass guest house, the square footage combined is 512 square feet. So we're trying to minimize the, the square footage of um, uh, what's touching the ground. Um, it's essentially on the main floor is just a studio, it's an open space. It's, a, it's a basically enough space for a bed. And then the ground floor is, is minimized and compacted the functions of a guest house, which are bathroom, a very small kitchenette, and then basically stairs. Um, entrance through a small little area that does cut into the ground. Um, it is somewhat within the woods. Um, it is a little bit more of a modern look um, in that it's a glass house, as I'm calling it. Um, there, are no, there are no large tree removal that's required. Um, and it essentially has its own sort of natural screening um, that already exists um, on the landscape. This is an existing um, barn that was built last summer. Um, it was built for um, storage. It has not. It is uh, essentially outgrown. It's used for um, um, mostly equipment for maintaining the site. Um, the client's uh, interest is to turn this into a um, uh, detached accessory building unit as well. Um, the existing square footage of this combined as well is. 13, uh, 1,322 square feet. Um, there's a proposal to obviously convert this, um, and then it would also have um, a small bathroom and a small little kitchen. Um, as well, there's two floors. And the last um, structure would be this um, two story uh, equipment storage um, barn. Essentially, um, the second floor is an open mezzanine. The first floor actually has garage door entries into it. Um, the style of this, and actually the manufacturer of this, is the same as the existing um, barn um, that I showed previously. Um, this would be the exterior. It's all a cedar siding with a um, uh, copper roof. Um, combined square footage of this is 2,688 square feet. Um, and that is, those are all of the buildings. Okay, any questions? Um, I think we, one thing we need to point out um, is that there are three variances required for this to go forward, and I believe you're going before the uh, ZBA Wednesday night. Correct. The applications are there. One is for the uh, square footage of this structure being converted over to an accessory dwelling. One is for the storage barn being proposed. And the third is for a 15,000 square foot maximum for the aggregate 1,500. 1,500, I'm sorry. Woo, boy. <laughs> Forget about the variance. Uh, 1,500 square foot maximum uh, for the aggregate uh, square footage of all accessory structures under a roof. And I think you're around 6,000 something. I 
But with, what was that number? 5,100. Okay. I carried the one too far. So, and that I believe is, these three things are before the uh, ZBA Wednesday night, I do believe. The applicants, I think we're not actually. I think we're not actually in front of them until the middle of the month. Okay, but the applications are there. The, yeah, they've received the applications. They received the applications. So it's a situation somewhat similar to the one that we had um, with the uh, failure of the yeah the failure of. Anyway, just wanted to bring those points up. Um, are there any questions? I have a resolution here for us to proceed. A couple of comments first. Okay. A um, couple of. Comments or additions to the uh, uh, to the resolution. Uh, one is a comment on what just got opened, uh, what was in that box. Uh, my comments did call for the submission of a revised DAF. Uh, the revised DAF uh, has been submitted. I just uh, glanced at it, and it seems to address the uh, the modifications that were requested. Therefore, uh, you know that EAF is certainly uh, uh, appropriate for use in the in the secret NOI circulation. Uh, I assume that the reduced drawings are also included. So uh, Joan, there's a, a matter of a secret distribution that needs to occur. I believe I've already transmitted to you the, uh, the NOI. Uh, one of the other comments that I did have in reviewing the EAF uh, related to uh, the acreage of disturbance uh, on the site uh, and the assertion that was uh, made by the uh, project engineer, uh, Berger Engineering, that a, uh, uh, a full SWIP was not required. Uh, in fact, uh, the, upon review, it's been determined, uh, as I believe to be the case, that a, the amount of disturbance does exceed five acres. A full SWIP is, in fact, required. Uh, DEC is going to have to approve that SWIP, and uh, at least a draft of the SWIP uh, has been uh, submitted with the, with the package. Uh, resolution and in anticipation that a SWIP would be required, uh, you'll note that, uh, in my anticipation, uh, you'll note that the draft resolution does include uh, reference to the SWIP and to the transmittal of that SWIP to the town engineer for review. Uh, there are also comments that I believe have not been communicated to the uh, applicant, uh, which are readily addressable regarding the coastal assessment form, uh, the cleanup of the coastal assessment form. And there's a, uh, uh, another provision that needs to be added uh, in the uh, draft resolution. And that would be that um, uh, upon the applicants uh, addressing, or upon the applicants modifying the coastal assessment form as pointed out in Planners East memo of uh, whatever the date happened to be, uh, February 19th, 20th or whatever, uh, that the uh, matter is, ref the applications are referred to the coast, to the, uh, Conservation Advisory, no, to the Waterfront Advisory Committee, which is separate from the Conservation Board, so to the Waterfront Advisory Committee for uh, review with respect to coastal policies. Uh, the only other point is uh, with respect to the timing of the public hearing. Uh, with everything else that's stacked up, it may be uh, appropriate to do this after the men's hearing. We set this at 740 or something of that sort because we've got uh, two, I think, two or three other two other applications to uh, to put in before the mensch uh, the mensch proceeding, and this, like mensch, is probably going to uh, draw uh, comment. So, so change I, this three to seven. Through change the three to seven, and I would you know just for for uh, so we can keep things moving along, put it at 740. Okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, we're going to add that um, between between uh, between items five and six, uh, they'll be added uh, the matter of the coastal assessment form. Uh, again, upon modification of the coastal assessment form uh, in accordance with the uh, planning consultant's recommendations of such and such a date, uh, the matter is referred to the Waterfront Advisory Committee for review and comment with respect to coastal policies. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Here we go. The Town of Brunswick Plain, yeah, did someone say something? Uh, in the preamble paragraph. Uh, the, bot the last of that, uh, for which the planning board will be issuing a notice of intent to serve as lead, lead agency. Okay. Instead of uh, including the date on which it was issued. Okay. The Town of Brian Planning Board, upon review by the Zoning Enforcement Officer and having conducted the required sketch plan conference on January 6, 2014, hereby acts as follows in the matter of applications for special use permits and site plan review and approval 
under Town Code Chapter 125 Zoning in the matter of the proposed single-family residential development of combined 44.096 acre parcel with site with site landscaping improvements, guest accommodations in the form of three detached accessory dwellings and other accessory structures in the Historic Preservation HP 20 Zoning District, the Hudson River Historic Landmarks District, the Estate District, Scenic Area of Statewide Significance, and the Town of Rymick Local Waterfront Revitalization Area, all as depicted or otherwise described within a 27-sheet set of architectural and engineering plans compiled by Jack Lynch. Oh. Got one. <laughs> Gardner Architects PC, entitled Duffy Residence, dated January 15th, 2014, and revised to February 13th, 2014, as Planning Board Submittal, and in a bound volume entitled Application Documents to the Town of Rhinebeck Proposed Development at 195 River Road and 35 Carmel Drive, Duffy Residence, including therein a supporting EAF Part 1 and Coastal Assessment Form, said requested approvals from the Town Planning Board and all other required permits and approvals from Town County State Agencies, collectively being a, a Type 1 action under SEEK, for which the Planning Board will be issuing a Notice of Intent to Serve as Lead Agency under SEEK or on... No, no, just under... When we get do rid it? of the on. Oh. We'll be issuing. Under Seeker. Yeah, it's going to tie ourselves down to a date. One, in consideration of both the applicant's acknowledgement that there are certain maximum square footage standards with respect to proposed barn 101, a detached accessory dwelling unit, and barn 202, a storage building, and a 1,500 square foot maximum aggregate floor area for accessory, roofed accessory structures, uses that are not met by the proposed development and the applicant's submission of a related application for area variances to the Zoning Board of Appeals on February, and we'll get the date down there, 9, 2014, accepts the applications as adequate for commencing review by the planning board, the board's consultants, and the public. Scheduled a combined public hearing as set forth within the annexed notice of public hearing on the applications for Monday, April 7th, 2014, at 7.40 p.m., and directs the clerk to undertake and or otherwise cause noticing, posting thereof, in strict accordance with the provisions of Town Code, Chapter 125, Zoning, Sections 12566 and 12577. Further directs the Planning Board Clerk to circulate the agricultural data statement in the manner prescribed in the New York State Agriculture and Markets Law. Delegates, Planning Board members, who wants to go? I go. Bob? I'll go. Melody? Okay, and I'm going to join that visit, uh, if at all possible. Yeah. Okay. To conduct, accompanied by the town planning consultant. Oh, so you got yourself right there already. A field visit to the project site and report their observations at the time of public hearing. Refers the applications to the town conservation advisory board for review and comment. Uh, refers the uh, coastal assessment form to the town waterfront advisory committee for consistency review and recommendation to the planning board. How's that sound? Yeah, after, that works. After it's been modified. Uh, okay. Seven. Refers the applications to the town historian for review and comment. Eight, refers the applications for special use permit and site plan review and approval to the Dutchess County Department of Planning and Development for review and advisory opinion pursuant to the requirements of section 239I and M of the general municipal law. Nine, refers the site plan and associated SWIP to the planning board engineer for technical engineering review and comment. 10, requests further technical review of the applications by the town's planning consultant and both in anticipation of the planning board's designation as lead agency under seeker and without prejudice to requirement for careful consideration by the planning board of any input that arises through the continuing review process as set forth above, authorizes the planning consultant to prepare the working draft of a full EAF part two and three as may be required and recommended determination of significance for consideration by the planning board, if so designated and when timely. The planning board does so in recognition of the inability of the Zoning Board of Appeals to decide the above noted application for area variances until coordinated environmental quality review has been undertaken by the designated lead agency. Could I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Aye. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. Okay, you'll want to coordinate with Melody and Bob on the site visit. It would probably be easier if they coordinate oh. through Art, and then Art can take the lead on. Uh, well, Art's... I could just email. Pretty, pretty flexible. Yeah. yeah. Can I make one possible correction to the, I think, the beginning of that? Just the, the project is 195 River Road and 31 Carmel Drive. That's what we have here. Are you, this is basically, you're just submitting for the River Road, not the Carmel no, Drive. No, it's for both. Nice. Okay. It's for both. Oh. 195 and 31, I believe, is what it should be, right? 195 River Road and 31 Carmel Drive. Ah. Uh, indeed, I... Oh. Hmm. There's 31 right there. So corrected. Yeah, 31. Yep. Okay. Thank you. 
Okay, next on the list. Carolyn Marks Blackwood, 64 Grinnell Street, subdivision, plat, special use permits, and site plan. Uh, this agenda item involves applications for subdivision, plat approval, special use permits, and site plan review and approval in the matter of the residential development of property at 64 Grinnell Street in the Rhinecliff, Hamlet, and Rhinecliff Overlay District, as well as the Hudson River Hist National Historic Landmarks District and the town's LWRA. The single family dwelling proposed for expansion is a contributing structure with the historic, within the historic district. Okay. I think we're winnowing down the list here. Hmm? Oh dear. What? We have 15 minutes. Oh, <laughs> we got more to deal with yet. We just want to set the agenda for the May 17th meeting to make sure we know what it's all about. Oh, let's see. We did not set one up for that. We did not do that. Yeah. We did not set one up for that. Seeker because there's health department approval, therefore it has to be a seeker circulation. You, you're also, not automatically the lead agency. Right. As they are in a case where there's no where there's no uh, other involvement. And and the question here is whether the existing garage is a contributing structure also. Which would trigger the building's law. <clears throat> All right, um, I'm representing uh, Carolyn Blackwood, uh, Steve Mensch. I'm representing Carolyn Blackwood and, and Greg Quinn, who are here. <clears throat> About seven or eight years ago, Carolyn brought, bought uh, three parcels of land in Rhinecliff uh, with the intention of <clears throat> eventually building something there. She, the house that's there has been badly uh, altered and is not, in any of our opinions, very attractive, but it's a gorgeous site. And Kellen bought it for the love of the site with the hopes of doing something wonderful there. And that's what I'm going to <clears throat> talk to you about. If, uh, if you'll take the, you, uh, quite a few things that are in the package I just gave you are also in the package that I gave, I submitted earlier. But I'm going to take you through it now. I thought it would be easier if we could all just look at them together. I'm sorry uh, for those of you who are sitting out there. Actually, I have an extra copy if you see, just following along. Uh, but there will be better graphics for the public. I mean, there'll be bigger size graphics for the public hearing. No. Maybe you won't follow. <clears throat> uh, the, the first page is the aerial view of uh, the site. This is at the top of Grinnell Street in Rhinecliffe. It's, uh, you're probably all familiar with this site. It's a, quite a conspicuous one. The three, the three parcels I've indicated with a circle with a cross on them there. <clears throat> and the the sites have on them, the first one has a garage on it, the, the, the uh, southernmost one. The middle one has a house on it. 
The third one is vacant. If you go to the next page, page two shows you the existing house. On the right is uh, what remains of the original building that was built in 1860. On the left is an addition that was built in 1997. Uh, on page three, you can, you can see very clearly the, the, the old and the new there, and you can get a sense of what, how it relates to that site. On page four is the uh, northern side of the building, and I'm showing you all these in part to point out that there is literally nothing visible of the original 1860 building. At the time that it was, uh, that it was rebuilt in, uh, that it was added to in 19, well, first it was added to in 1940. There was an, there was an addition on the, on the uh, south side. But then in 1997, that addition was taken off. The large addition that exists today was built. And almost everything about the original building was changed. The, the, the windows were all moved, the siding was replaced, all the trim was taken off, the grade was raised so that none of the original foundation is exposed, at least on the upper hill, on the upside. Uh, there's really nothing that you look at, you're looking at that was of the original building. On page five, uh, is another view, of, that's a view of the, of the south side of the building. And I especially want you to notice the contour of the land there, which you'll also see in, in the uh, site plan. There's a big bowl that's been cut into the site. Uh, we don't know exactly how or when or why, but presumably it was, it was cut in to create something of a backyard for the house. Um, you can see that there's a rapid drop off from the from the street. Uh, there's a whole. The basement is a walkout basement, so there's a. This, the uh, difference in elevation is a is a full floor from the from the street elevation to the existing lawn and back. You can also get a sense from that from that uh, shot, and also from the next shot on number six, that there is a very beautiful relationship to the river. Uh, across, uh, to the west, there's the drama of all the skies and the weather, and, but there's also a Kingston and, and all, the, all that's, been, that's been built there. But to the north, which is uh, page six, there's a really gorgeous, uh, less, less spoiled view. Then on page seven, you can see uh, there's a large rock outcropping on the uh, opposite the house. You can see it if you go back to, to five. Well, on the left-hand side of page five would be this large outcropping, which you see in page seven, which we all admire tremendously and want very much to incorporate into the composition. Then uh, page eight shows the existing garage, which is on that, the southernmost parcel. It's uh, 21 by 36. Page nine shows the, the remaining parcel, the, southern, the uh, northernmost parcel, which is vacant and it has this wonderful park-like character. And this is a view you're probably all familiar with because everyone who wants to see a view and goes through Rhinecliff drives up and looks across this park. It's, it's really a, a wonderful spot. Then uh, page 10 is immediately to the uh, south of the property. There is a garage with an apartment above it. That's page 10. You can see the garage that's on uh, our property immediately to the right there. Across from it, there's this wonderful old um, 
house that's, if you look on, uh, if you look on the, on the uh, aerial view, it's 342815. It's right across the street from the main house. And its view, if you look at next page 12, that's the view from the house across the street. So you can see that that vacant land is really important to that house. Page 13 is the next house south. And excuse me, north. Uh, and page 14 is the view from that house. So you can see that it, that vacant spot also plays an important part uh, for that house. So uh, let me talk a second then about the uh, program. <clears throat> when uh, Carolyn and, and Greg approached me, uh, they told, told me that they needed a two-bedroom a two house. Plus, uh, Carolyn, Carolyn is a film producer and a professional photographer. She, uh, she works at home, and she requires a, a studio space, good archival storage space. And because she works as a film producer internationally, she often has collaborators who come and work with her and spend extended periods of time. And she wants to provide a separate uh, living space, a little apartment for these extended visitors. Also with the idea that since she swears she will not leave that property until she goes out feet first, she wants to provide for the possibility of caretaking on site if she gets to the point where she needs it. So, that, so the program includes um, the house, the, the two bedroom house, the, uh, the uh, separate apartment. She needs a viewing room for the showing of her, of her film work. She needs, as I mentioned, archival storage. And she needs a studio, all of which comes to more than 2,300 square feet, which is the allowable square footage in Rhinecliff. However, she owns three parcels. So when she approached me, the idea was, well, we can always build separate buildings on separate parcels if that's what we need to do. Uh, as we got into the, well, th let me talk before I go on a little farther uh, about some criteria that I really brought to the table. Uh, the obvious thing would have been to, well, Carolyn and Greg wanted, wanted some modern space with extensive glass because of this gorgeous view. And the obvious thing would have been to take off the back of the building, fill it with glass, keep the traditional street side. It still would have had to been enlarged considerably, but that would have been kind of the obvious approach. But I have a particular dislike for buildings that start out in one style and end up in another. So it was important to me that I find an approach to this problem that would allow us to have a modern, a modern building there without compromising the integrity of the existing historic building. The other thing that was important was to orient the building more strongly to the north because of that beautiful northern view. Right now, the building is oriented only to the west, really. Um, and then the third thing that became very important because, because she wanted more space was to find a way of, of providing that without compromising the, the scale of Rhinecliffe because I'm, because the scale is what Rhinecliffe is all about. It's, it's got such a beautiful scale. Uh, the buildings are all so small, and they're all eccentric, and, and the way they all sit on different directions because of the topography and all. It, it, has, it has a lot to do with the charm of Rhinecliffe. And I felt very strongly, we all did, that we wanted to preserve and enhance that character, not not come up against it. So if you look at page 15, 
that's, that's, the, that's what's on the site, diagrammatically. And page 16 is this, tells you the strategy that we came up with to how to approach the site. To remove the new part of the building, the part that was built in 1997, to restore the original part as much as possible, to build it an underground foundation which would accommodate some of the spatial needs she has, and also because, because of the slope, uh, it provides space with uh, walkout basement space, or living space. And then, uh, and to take down the existing garage, but on the same footprint, build a garage with an apartment above it. And then on top of that foundation, if you go to page 17, build a little living room, dining room, kitchen kind of pavilion on top of that foundation that you saw in the earlier drawing. And, and doing this, and then connect them around the back with a, with a dense hedge, which would create a courtyard uh, around, so the buildings would have a little courtyard connecting them, and would also uh, shelter the building in such a way that it would, because it's only about 11 feet tall, and the hedge would be probably 10 feet tall, it would be vir virtually invisible from the street, and because of the rock outcroppings and the way the topography works, it would have only a modest impact on the river. So, if you look at page 18, that's the existing view from the river. Page 19 is the proposed view from the river. Oops. Page 20 is the existing garage with the neighboring garage. And page 21 is the proposed replacement garage, which would be in the same vernacular as the existing garage and the, and the, and the house. I have here a model of all this. It's hard to, because of the complexity of the topography, it's, it's a little bit hard to, to uh, picture it all. So I thought a, a model would be important. Um, oh, let's take wheel out there. Oh, yeah, okay. 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 Now we're going to get up and look, take a look closer. Look. There's access to the new building from the original house under. Yes, through, to get from the new building to the house, you go downstairs and across. We particularly, or I particularly, didn't want any kind of a connection at the upper level because I didn't want the building to look big. I wanted these to look like small, a, a cluster of small buildings, not like a big building. Maybe I should uh, pass it. Have it also, I'll go all, uh, again so you can see it from the street side. You, because of the existence of the old building and the angles of the street and everything, you really would, it would have almost mm -hmm. you know, visibility. The, uh, all the trees on this model are the trees that are there, except for this tree, which would be added, mm -hmm. and the hedges mm -hmm. would be added. But no trees have been removed. Uh, 
think any, that's probably yeah. it. Any questions? Do you have any old photographs of the the way the structure originally looked? Originally? Yeah. There is, I've tried to find photographs. We have one photograph which was taken after 1940 because it has that addition, the porch addition. It's a tiny little photograph and you can't see really much of anything. It's taken from some distance and uh, you can't tell what the details were of the building. If, they, if those were even the original details, we wouldn't know. But other than that, I haven't I, I, uh, I talked to Nancy Kelly about it, and she wasn't able to come up mm, with anything. Really? So that'd be interesting to see what it looks like. Mm. Yeah. I suspect that it looked like a, a lot of build, it was built in 1860, and there are, and and it was quite small. Uh, it's that building is 20, 20 by 26. The uh, there are a lot of buildings of that size and that vintage. Yeah. And they're very simply detailed. It was probably like a lot of them with, with not a lot of formality to the detailing. Most of them seem to have uh, double hung windows with uh, either two over two or uh, sometimes they're four over four. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be, f um, uh, would try to f be as accurate as we could, but sure. I don't think there's any way of really knowing. The questions? Art? I think other than the obvious comment that uh, Stephen and his client uh, deserve to be commended on, on the concept, uh, I do have two uh, technical questions. Uh, the first concerns um, whether or not there is going to be a new septic system, uh, sanitary disposal system installed in this site. Um, I didn't see it referenced in I didn't hear it referenced during your presentation, yeah. Stephen. Well, I do notice that there is a, a PE involved in the project, yeah. and I did notice that on the uh, environmental assessment form, uh, Board of Health approval is cited as one of the uh, one of the requirements. Right. Uh, and I don't see a, uh, a, a proposed SDS location on the site plan. So what what is the situation with respect to that? And it also affects your procedural uh, resolution this evening. The there is an exist existing yeah, uh, leach pit. It's a, yeah, it's a leach pit. And when I first spoke to the Board of Health about it, because we weren't adding any, it's, it's, it's sized for three bedrooms currently. And they, and, and they said, well, you could probably just use that because you're only going to have three bedrooms. You're not expanding, right? However, subsequently, they've kind of backed away from okay. that. Okay. That, that, that's enough for this, for this evening then. Uh, you know, unless you've got more detail. No, no. That's, uh, that's why Robert is involved in the project. Y yes, and and probably there'll be another engineer involved. But uh, I'm waiting for a final determination from the Board of Health because it's it was going to be kicked upstairs. The guy, the guy who originally said you don't need it, and then said, well, maybe you do. Said, I need to take it higher up the chain, and then I'll let you know for sure. Conservative approach for the board this evening, uh, with respect to secret uh, circulation, is to recognize that Board of Health or Department of uh, the Health is a potential involved agency, therefore go to secret circulation on that basis. The resolution does call uh, for the if and when uh, plans are submitted to the uh, Department of Health that copies be submitted to, to the planning board. Again, you don't have approval authority, but it's part of the, it's part of the, the site plan. The second uh, question, uh, and uh, it uh, seems like a strange question, but uh, we've, seen, we've seen worse, uh, is the existing garage Historic. Uh, listed as a contributing structure within the district. It isn't. I have the, I have the listing here. That's okay. Okay. The old so it's, it's, it's not covered. It's a non-contributing structure. Right. You're, you're, luckier, you're luckier than Warren Smith uh, with a project that's <laughs> yeah, coming was, up. Was, was okay. with really because if it, if it were a contributing structure, then its removal would have been governed under the historic buildings law. Yeah. Another permit or another approval would be required. So, so okay. It's, that, it's definitely non-contributing. Non, uh, and Melody, uh, the question that I raised on an earlier uh, case this evening, uh, what about uh, uh, the board's, I can't say re uh, recommendation, the board's directive uh, with respect to either pre-construction archeological investigation because of the disturbance that's going to be created to the site or monitoring during, uh, during construction? I 
think you have to have some pre-construction. No, notice, uh, Melody, that that bowl that exists is pretty much where this thing is going to go. Uh, we, there isn't going to be a whole lot of digging in addition to what's already been excavated. There'll be some. I'm not saying there won't be some, but but it won't be as much as you would think to look at the model, for example. You'd, you'd think there was going to be a whole lot, but... But in any case... Uh, yeah, I'm just concerned because of its proximity to the river. You know, it's certainly a logical place for something. Yeah, yeah. So, so you, would, you would basically add to whatever draft resolution uh, I provided, uh, board requires uh, a pre-construction archaeological report to be submitted. Is that...? That's been basically our policy. Right. Especially with anything along the river, I mean. Okay. okay. Other than that, uh, the thing that makes it a great location today made it a great location before. Yeah. Um. Let's see. I was just doing something else here. I think there may be one more point, but maybe not. It's okay. The resolution uh, as proposed, um, 7.20 on the time. Uh, on April, and this one does say April 7th. And we'll just insert uh, perhaps between 9 and 10 the matter of requiring a pre-construction archaeological report. Where are the, okay, wait a minute. Yep. And 7.20, what do we say? 7.20. 7.20. Okay. The Town of Rhinebuck Planning Board, upon review by the Zoning Enforcement Officer, hereby acts as follows in the matter of applications by Carolyn Marks Blackwood for subdivision plat approval under Town Code Chapter 101, Subdivision of Land, and Special Use Permit and Site Plan Review and Approvals under Town Code Chapter 125, Zoning, to authorize consolidation of two lots into a single parcel totaling 0.61 acres at 64 Grinnell Street in the Rhinecliff Hamlet and Rhinecliff Overlay Districts, the Hudson River National Historic Landmarks District and the town's LWRA, and both the renovation and expansion of the existing dwelling and the construction of a new garage with a second floor intended to, for use as a detached accessory dwelling unit. Thereon, all is depicted in architectural drawings by Steve Mensch and a site plan prepared by, who did, who did the site plan? Or, or both yours. No, Robert Murray. By Robert, Robert Murray. Murray. Okay. okay. By Robert Murray. And otherwise subject to a full EAF part one, a coastal assessment form, a narrative conformance. Ah, a proposed use with general standards for special use permits and a February 4th, 2014 letter, all is prepared by the applicant. One, classifies the proposed action as a type one action under Seeker due to its location within the Hudson River National Historic Landmarks District and its direct involvement of a contributing structure within the district. In the presence of the above circumstance, declares it to be the intent of the planning board to serve as lead agency for required coordinated environmental review of the proposed action under Seeker, and thus directs the clerk to issue the annexed notice of intent to serve as lead agency under Seeker in accordance with the pertinent provisions of the Seeker Implementing Regulation 6 NYCRR Part 617. Three, under Town Code Chapter 101, Subdivision of Land, accepts the application for subdivision plat approval as adequate for commencing further review by the Planning Board and its consultants and consideration by the public, and classifies the proposed subdivision as a lot consolidation as a minor subdivision. Four, accepts the application for special use permits to authorize under Town Code Chapter 125, Section 125-40H3, developed within 1,000 feet of the Hudson River, and to further authorize, under the district schedule of use regulations in section 125-68E, the location and occupancy of a detached accessory dwelling as adequate for commencing further review by the planning board and its consultants in consideration by the public contingent upon receipt of documentation of contact with the Dutchess County Health Department in the matter of design approval for intended sanitary sewage facilities, such documentation to first include submission to the planning board of a copy of any application, including accompanying engineering design plans, submitted to the County Health Department and subsequently record of any action taken by the Department on the application. Five, accepts the application for site plan approval under Town Code Chapter 125 Zoning and as a required complement to any application for a special use permit and as more particularly cited under Section 125-69E in the case of any development in the RCO District as adequate for commencing further review by the Planning Board and its consultants in consideration by the public with it, A, acknowledged by the 
applicant that the requested approval may not be granted by the planning board unless an area variance commensurate with the proposed the proposed in the matter of the proposed gross floor area of the expanded single family dwelling being in excess of the maximum 2300 square foot standard set forth within section 12569C7 for a dwelling within the RCO district was first granted by the Zoning Board of Appeals and B documented the related application for very was submitted to the ZBA on and we'll get that date. While considering the above applications, the Planning Board has identified another required and closely related application that has not yet been submitted, that being an application for a special use permit under Town Code Chapter 125, Section 12569E, as pertinent to any development in the RCO district. This additional application must be submitted to complete the minimum applications package and allow simultaneous processing of all required applications within the purview of the Planning Board. Seven, contingent upon the applicant's submission of the aforementioned additional application for special use permit not later than March 10th, 2014, schedules as set forth in the next notice of public hearing and combined public hearing on the applications for Monday, April 7th, 2014 at 7.20 p.m. and directs the clerk to undertake and or otherwise cause noticing and posting thereof in strict accordance with the provisions of both Town Code Chapter 101 Subdivision of Land, Section 101.4D and Town Code Chapter 125 Zoning, Sections 12566 and 12577. Delegates, planning board members, I'll take Woody. One. I'll take one piece of it. Okay. Sharon. Okay. Woody and Sharon to conduct a field visit to the project site and report their observations at the time of public hearing. Nine refers the applications to the Town Conservation Advisory Board for review and comment. Chan Re requires a pre-construction archaeological report to be submitted. Eleven refers the applications to the Town Historian for review and comment. 12, refers the applications and accompanying, with accompanying coastal assessment form to the Town Waterfront Advisory Committee for a view and recommendation as to consistency with pertinent town coastal policies as set forth within the town's local waterfront revitalization program. 13, requests further technical review of the applications by the town's planning consultant and without prejudice to requirement for careful consideration by the planning board of any input that arises through the continuing review process as set forth above, authorizes the planning consultant to initiate working drafts of both EAF part two and three as may be required for consideration by the planning board upon its likely designation as secret lead agency and resolutions with recommended conditions and or requirements incorporate for consideration by the board under seeker and the town code when and if timely. Uh, in discussion of that resolution or uh, the, the requirement for the additional special permit can be met by simply getting uh, together with Joan and, uh, and uh, noting on the, uh, the application that was submitted the requirement for the special permit under that other section 69E or whatever it happens to be. Mm -hmm. It doesn't it doesn't require a separate form or a separate fee or anything of that sort. Yeah. Well, maybe it requires right. an, ex, an extra $50 fee or something, I, whatever, whatever is required. I don't think we asked. But but the the, uh, the actual application that's been here before submitted can right. simply be annotated to, to, to pick up this additional item. Could I hear a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? All right. Very good. So you'll co coordinate with Woody and Sharon on the site visit. Give me a number that I can Okay, I think our next item Warren's item uh, is Warren's that item. That item. This is the uh, application for a special use permit uh, for an addition and renovation of an existing single family dwelling. In on Jones Street in Ranklin. Mm -hmm. Warren. So she's usually available after four. Try to do it during the week. Just. Whatever works. So this is a number to get. Yeah, one before you go. Ranklin has very unassuming triple house, a time where I can stand in the middle of the upstairs. It's had some unfortunate additions made since the original house was built in 1987. On the West side, there is a there's glass in uh, front porch, it's sort of a foundation that uh, the owners would like to uh, rebuild as a sort of more permanent structure to incorporate the rest of the house. And on the east side, um, a series of very low rambling additions that, um, again, spent over the years, would like to rebuild that. Uh, it, it is a kitchen, but it's very dark and very low. And just like to open it up and bring it more light. So there's no no intent to expand the footprint of the house. We're working with the existing footprint of the house, um, but they would like to put a deck further on the west side. The people who own the house for a few months, they were negotiating. They rented it for several years. They were negotiating with the previous owner for some time, 
And during the process of the negotiations, um, lo and behold, a new septic system had to be installed. The previous owner did a new optic septic system, which of course was a challenge. Yeah. Um, but that was done, and so we don't need to worry about it. We don't need to touch it. We're not changing the bedroom count anything like that. Um, and the, that's the size of the deck and so on. Mm -hmm. But uh, so, so really, we're, um, the house right now is sort of a medium blue, and these, and these uh, images are the more green. But um, the, the intent, it's going to look very much like what's there when we're there. And uh, with, with, again, a little more light inside, uh, where we, we have low, low ceilings. But, um, but that's the plan. There's no, no change in program. It's uh, uh, three bedroom house, we're in a three bedroom house. And, uh, is it a contributing structure, do you know? I mean, to yes, some... it is quite simply by the virtue of the fact that it's in the Hamlet in 1887, it's considered contributing. It certainly okay. has no individual significance. But as an old house, uh, it will have to fall into that. It's a non-contributing structure. Yeah. The, the, things, the, the glass porch is coming off one side. There's a, there's a porch that Whatever has that is. It. Right. It's going to be, it's going to be, well, it's going to be re rebuilt with mm -hmm. the wall that it has right now. Essentially. Was that thing something that was added later oh, on? Yes. Like, so right. it's, that's not one part of the contributing structure no, of the contributing structure. No. And then what I'm trying to get at, is there any alteration to the outside that's taking something off mm -hmm. that, that, that's not, that's that was not part of the, okay. Right. That's being replaced with something that's better built, but it's not as good. But what's going off is not something that was part of the contributing, yeah. part of the reason it was listed, part of the reason it's a contributing structure. Yeah, yeah if anything, it might have led to it being not contributing. Okay. I'm just trying to see if we have, if the historic structures law kicks in for, you know, partial demolition of a contributing um, structure. Yeah, yes, that, that I don't know. It's certainly be referred to the town as for her comments, but... Uh, well, it, uh, it is a contributing structure, you said, yes, right, Mark? Yes, it is, sure. Therefore, it, it does kick in. The demolition requires the, it requires the permit. Even if... The what's even being even demolished is. Huh? Well, I don't think the law distinguishes between. It doesn't distinguish. It doesn't distinguish. No, if you're, if you're removing any substantial element, you know, so so it would be required. Okay. I suggest to to Warren um, when he uh, told me before this meeting uh, that he had researched the question that I asked earlier this afternoon uh, that the board uh, acknowledge in the procedural resolution uh, that there is uh, the uh, the requirement for a. Uh, request for certificate of demolition or removal, I guess that's what it's called. Well. The, the, that, that, that particular application is required and uh, conditional upon uh, Warren uh, and his client getting that application in here within the next week or so, yeah. uh, which is, it's an easy thing, mm -hmm. uh, that the board would uh, c consider it part of the combined public hearing. We'd uh, jointly, jointly notice it. And, and run it concurrently. It, it, right, and run it concurrently. So it's, a, it's a partial demolition. Yep. that it's not a historical problem. Right. Yeah. So it shouldn't be a problem. It should just be basically procedural. And the other question that Art raised is, are we within 1,000 feet of the river? Yes. Area? Yeah. So consequently, in the draft resolution, uh, both sections, both provisions that I had underlined, because mm -hmm. those were subject to review, the underlining goes out. Those, those particular provisions stay in the resolution, and uh, this addi additional acknowledgment and treatment of the uh, uh, application on the historic buildings law it simply needs to be referenced right. um, and uh, because of the the way the schedule has shaken out uh, uh, this actually can be inserted as the 640 item uh, I failed to consider that the 645 item that we were talking about was really a seven was a March 17th item mm -hmm. the Carmichael so this uh, th there's a there's a hole to plug in there and then everything else follows through uh, do you well, have you, you have, uh, you'll have three, six, you'll have two continuation public hearings and seven new public hearings that evening. Oh, wonderful. <laughs> I'm not going to show up. Um, do you have the resolution? I don't have a yeah, you have, you have a resolution in I the, oh, oh, the resolution uh, was in the notes that came out today. Oh, I didn't, well, I didn't get I that. didn't get those yet. Oh, okay. I guess I'll read them. Okay. All right. Does anyone have any questions before I embark on this? <laughs> no, please read it. <laughs> Get it over with. All right. Town of Brunswick Planning Board, upon review by the Zoning Enforcement Officer who missed the historic structures part of it, hereby acts as follows in the matter of applications by Peter Rosenblum and Ashwini, thank you, Warren Temple Smith, agent for special use permits and site plan review and approval under Town Code Chapter 125 Zoning, to authorize the renovation and expansion of the existing single family dwelling 
On a fi uh, at 5 Jones Street in the Rancliffe Hamlet and Rancliffe Overlay Districts, the Hudson River National Historic Landmarks District, and the town's LWRA, all is depicted in architectural drawings and on a site plan prepared by Warren Temple Smith Architects and dated January 7, 2014, and otherwise subject of a full EAF Part 1 verified by the applicant and a coastal assessment form signed by Mr. Smith. One, classifies proposed action as a type 1 action under seeker due to its location within the Hudson River National Historic Landmarks District and its direct involvement in a contributing structure within the district. Two, in the presence of the above circumstance, declares it to be the intent of the planning board to serve as lead agency for required coordinated environmental, quality, environmental review of the proposed action under seeker. Three, in consideration of the fact that there are no other potential involved agencies with respect to the proposed action, advises the clerk that there is no requirement to issue a notice of intent to serve as lead agency under seeker in accordance with the pertinent provisions of the seeker implementing regulations 6 NYCR part 617 and that in fact the planning board is sole involved agency is the lead agency under seeker for environmental quality review of this proposed action. Four, accepts the application for special use permit under Town Code Chapter 125 Zoning, Section 125-69E as pertinent to any development within the RCO District and the further application for a special use permit to authorize under Town Code Chapter 125, Section 125-40H3, development within 1,000 feet of the Hudson River, as adequate for commencing further public review by the Planning Board, its consultants, and consideration by the public. Five, accepts the application for site plan review and approval under Town Code Chapter 125 Zoning and as a required complement to any application for a special use permit and as more particularly cited under Section 12569E in the case of any development in the RCO district as adequate for commencing further review by the Planning Board and its consultants and consideration by the public. And six, Schedules a combined public hearing on the application for Monday, April 7th, that's 6.40, did we say? 6.40, yes. 6.40 p.m. <clears throat> and directs the clerk to undertake and or otherwise cause noticing and posting thereof in strict accordance, <coughs> excuse me, with the provisions of Town Code Chapter 125, Zoning, Sections 12566 and 12577. Delegates, planning board members, don't all speak at once. I'll go, who wants to go with me? Okay, Melody and I'll go. Okay. To conduct a field visit, we'll try to do this before the last day this time. Uh, to conduct a field visit to the project site and report their observations at the time of public hearing. Refers the applications to the Dutchess County Department of Planning and Development for review and advisory opinion pursuant to chapter, pursuant to section 239 of the general municipal law. Refers the applications to the Town Conservation Advisory Board for review and comment. Refers the applications to the Town Historian for review and comment. Refers the, refers the applications with accompanying coastal assessment form to the Town Waterfront Advisory Committee for review and recommendation as to consistency with pertinent town coastal policies as set forth within the Town's local waterfront revitalization program. 12. Requests further technical review by, of the applications by the town's planning consultant and without prejudice to requirement for careful consideration by the planning board of any input that arises through the continuing review process, including referrals as set forth above, authorizes the planning consultant to initiate working drafts of both a full EAF Part 2 and 3 as may be required for consideration by the planning board and resolutions with recommended conditions and or requirements incorporated for consideration by the board under seeker and the town code when and if timely. New paragraph. Oh, God. In taking this action... The planning board uh, understands and the applicant acknowledges oh, yeah. the requirement for submission of an application for, certifi for certificate of demolition or removal under the town's historic buildings protection law and upon receipt of said application not later than March 10th, 2014, uh, will, inter will integrate or will incorporate uh, that application uh, within the public hearing, uh, within the public notice and public hearing uh, scheduled for April, uh, April 7th. Hope someone got that down. <laughs> the, the TV did it, nothing else. Ah. <laughs> well done. Could I hear a motion to approve? I move. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? All right. Very good. Okay then. Um, Last on our agenda is just to set the um, March 17th agenda, what items we are going to have on that agenda. Okay, it's, uh, it's not as comprehensive as we probably would like it to be in light of what, how much is on the April 7th. The, the items for, um, uh, for March 17th uh, will be the continuation of the public hearing on Carmichael. Uh, if, if it becomes complete uh, in short order, 
uh, Michael, I would think the Duren Page application could be considered if the missing uh, uh, part uh, surfaces in the next few days. Yeah, and it should. They should be getting uh, that. There can be consideration of any matters that are referred by either the town board, the ZBA, or the ZEO between now and the 17th, mm -hmm. uh, in that the ZBA is meeting on Wednesday evening. It's likely that there'll be one or two matters that the ZBA has on its plate that have to be referred to the planning board. And the only other item that can be considered is an administrative item, which would be uh, the acceptance of uh, any minutes that might be uh, completed between now and the 17th. Everything else uh, has to roll until that uh, April 7th What's meeting. As I said, it's uh, Red Wing, Matthews, Rosenblum, Shirapko, Grace Bible, Giuliano, Blackwood, Mench, Duffy. Those are the hip public hearings in that order. Yay. Okay, um, the motion to uh, we'll actually approve this agenda. This is what we're going to do on the 17th. Yes. And a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. A motion to leave. Do it. Second. second. All in favor. Aye. We stand adjourned at.